When our president, Dr. Terry Fulmer, came, she wanted to take a lot of the research that had been done and programs that had been developed that weren't reaching the people they were intended to do. And she had this, this vision and this idea of not necessarily focusing on specific conditions, but to focus on the whole person and thus age-friendly care. So our three priorities are age-friendly care, supporting family caregivers, and then serious illness and end of life. And you can imagine how all those work together. We feel like collaboration is in our DNA. We wanna work with other partners such as the American Hospital Association. We're proud of the work that we do with the US aging and triple AIDS communities to really advance age-friendly care. You know, after COVID, the impact to people living in nursing homes was just so devastating to us and to our president that they really started working on a variety of nursing home initiatives. And one of those is age-friendly. There are now 480 some nursing homes that are recognized as age-friendly. And then this work that we're doing in Pennsylvania is called a return to teaching nursing homes. They're teaching the nursing homes about age-friendly, but they're connecting academic schools of nursing and nursing homes so that they can increase the pipeline. There have now been over 500 students, about 30 were going before. So that's huge. And when they bring age-friendly into that, the work that some of these nursing homes are doing is amazing. It's just something that makes sense to the direct care staff. Ageism, we know, is underlying a lot of this. And so that is a key effort of ours to reframe aging and the impact it has on policy. I bring that up because, for example, in New York, we're all working together to improve the ageism. New York, of course, is uh, one of the first states to be recognized as an age-friendly state by the AARP. And so I would say we get a lot of positive reinforcement.